Happy Fourth of July. Enjoy your freedoms while we still have them, because you wonder sometimes if they're going to still be here in the weeks and months and years to come. But I'm grateful for the freedoms that we have enjoyed in this country. And so as we celebrate this Fourth of July weekend, we're saying thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you've given to us already in our lives. Amen. And, uh, yes. My prayer to God is that uh, we would understand and know that without God in this country, our country is doomed for sure. But I'm grateful that God is still in my life. So even though the country might be going in the wrong direction, I'm still headed in the right Hallelujah. direction. Amen. And yes. so are you. If you know Jesus, you got your ticket punched, you're on your way to the other side. One day we will be there. Amen. Amen. Father, we love you today. We thank you for the blessings of life and the peace that gives us hope. Dear Lord, we thank you, Father, that without you, we are nothing, but in you, Lord, we live and move, and we certainly have our being. I pray that, Father, you just bless our time here today as we sing these songs and lift up the name of Jesus. May we be an encouragement to the hearts and lives of those that may watch us and those, Father, that may sit, Father, in this sanctuary. And I pray that whatever we do today, Lord, that you'd get the honor, the glory, and the praise for it. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Everybody said together. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord.
Kelly. I bet you he's going to get that fast. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I tell you one thing. One of these days, that's going to be a reality. Yes. I amen. think sometimes people, they've lost sight of, of the other side. People keep looking on this side, thinking they're going to find all their joy and all their happiness and all their peace on this side. Listen, the journey is going to be worth it. Yes. I can promise you that. How you know that? That's what the Bible tells me. Amen. And I'm one of those guys that choose to believe that it's true. Amen. Maybe you're not. Maybe you've lost sight of the Word of God and you think God's some big tyrant that hates you. But once you understand something, He loved you so much, He sent Jesus Christ to die on Calvary's cross so that you could have this great salvation. And it is a great salvation. Amen. It's not something uh, that can be played with, but it's something that can literally change your life if you'll just let Jesus come in your heart and in your life. Amen. Amen. Some last morning when this life is over I just had a picture of Lois in her living room going. I don't know if you're doing that, Lois, but it's a picture I've seen. But you know what? 100%. One of these times. She's 100% doing that. She's 100% doing that. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know what? It's okay to get excited about what you have in Jesus. Amen. And you know, the devil's always trying to steal our joy. Mm -hmm. I mean, no matter how hard you try, how 
difficult. Uh, sometimes the circumstances may get. Uh, Jesus is always there to help us get through our battles. And uh, I'm grateful for that. You know, I was talking to Pastor Chris this morning. They couldn't be here because of the uh, night of the cold. And, uh, we were talking about this morning. It's like, you can't let the devil steal your joy. You, you have to keep looking and saying, I'm headed for the other side. I'm not going to get all caught up in what this world is doing and worry about what this world is doing. I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus, and one day I'm going to enter into that land. I woke up with this song in my mind this morning. We have really done it as a band, but uh, we're going to try it this morning. It's called Revelation Song. Oh, God. 
Jesus our Savior. Sandy's going to sing, so you sit in prayer for her. She makes her way over here. Uh, over there. We're going to learn this song that she's going to sing live. This time we're going to do it with the CD. So you pray for her. Huh? Praise the Lord. our freedom while we have it. Let's, let's celebrate it. And I love this song. It says He is here. And no matter where you're at, if you love the Lord, just give Him a few minutes, close your eyes, and He'll be right there with you. So sing with me if you know it. If you don't, just, just worship Him. Oh, and Sister Lois, we all love you so much.
Praise the Lord. You say, how do you know he's here? Well, you know, I've been always taught and believed that he lived inside of us. So he wasn't here till we got here. Right? But when you walked in the door, he came with you. Praise the Lord. Because he is in us. He is that well of water springing up unto everlasting life. Praise the Lord. I'm going to clean off my desk here. They call this thing a lot of things. But a lectern, a pulpit. I call it a desk because it's pretty big. I'm grateful to the Lord for the uh, opportunity to share with you this morning. If you want to read with me or follow along with me, turn your Bibles to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. There was a person that opened up a coffee shop and he called it Hebrews. It's like, okay, a little bit play on words there. but uh, I'm grateful to the Lord. I've been uh, reading in the book of Ezekiel and uh, when you read Ezekiel and you see all that God had told uh, the nations um, that he was going to have to do because of their sin, because of the uh, their rejection of him and their turning away from him. Um, I, I read it and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it going, wow, and what a what an awful thing to come to in, in your journey on this earth, realizing because of what happens and your rejection of, of God that all that stuff would just start to come on you. He's talking, you know, nations that were even more vile and ungodly than you are were going to come on you because you had gotten to the place where that you were so vile that God had to do something to, to get our attention. And uh, I really believe in my heart God's been trying to get our attention for a long time. Amen. And uh, through all the things that have happened from way back to Katrina to 9-11 to uh, some of the other storms that have hit, volcanoes that have erupted all over our world, uh, hurricanes and all kind of uh, mayhem that's been taking place. Also, the violence that's gone on in our nation and in our world for so long with the killing of our babies and the uh, people that just seemingly don't have any uh, reservations about doing vile and awful things, um, the murders and things like that. I, I wonder sometimes, you know, God, I know that we have been, how can I say this? We were founded on godly principles. I mean, uh, the pilgrims and stuff that came here from years gone by, they came here for, for one purpose, and that was so that they could worship God to the dictates of their own heart and be able to have a place where that they weren't told how they had to worship. Or And as that got established over time, there was a lot of wars that went on, a lot of things that took place that caused all of those things to transpire, and yet... We had come to a certain time in our life when there was revival in the land, people were repenting, people were changing, and then things just went the other way. We thought, at least I thought anyway, that this pandemic would bring us together. And it really has divided us more than anything else. Um, I'm just blown away by how separated we are uh, as a people. You know, we're, we're looking at the color of skin. We're looking at the, um, you know, the way people were raised and all kind of different things that just separate us. And it just, it, it doesn't make sense. You know, if you cut us, no matter who we are, our blood's red. I mean, we're all, you know, God created the heavens and the earth and then he made man out of the dust of the earth and blew into his nostrils and made him a living soul. And... You know, somebody asked the question the other day. A uh, little kid asked his dad, said, Dad, why is that guy black? And he thought about it for a minute. He goes, well, son, I thought it was a great answer. He said, you know, God is such uh, a person of variety. He likes all different colors. He said, if you just look at our world, there's green trees and red flowers and pink flowers and yellow flowers. And he said, 
God likes variety, so that's why that guy's that way. And then you got people that are yellow and some that are red, because God likes variety. But he didn't mean for us to be divided because of our skin color. Yes? He meant for us to be as one people. And I don't know why I'm talking about this, but it's just been on my mind for a while. Um, but I, I want to look at the book of Hebrews chapter 11. And uh, I have a thought for a message. I told Pastor Chris what I was going to share this morning. And he said, well, I'll be watching. I said, okay. But, uh, if I have a title for this message, it would be Lessons from the Life of Abraham. Lessons from the Life of Abraham. I think sometimes... Uh, we get so caught up in thinking the Old Testament is not relevant that we don't see that there is things that are there that can actually be instruct, instructions for our own personal lives that would help us. But in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, beginning in verse 8, if you want to read with me or just believe that I'm reading what's here. But without faith it is impossible to please him, speaking of God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen? Verse 8 said, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died, or in fact, let me move down to uh, verse uh, 17. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it is said that in Isaac shall all thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. Father, we love you today. Thank you for just the opportunity to be here today, Lord. It's a, always a privilege to be able to come and share some time with our brothers and sisters, not only in this room, Lord, but also by Facebook. I pray that you just bless our time here. May we be an encouragement and a blessing to all that hear us today, and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, one of the first things I see here uh, is that Abraham was obedient. Isn't it important? Now, you know ourselves, when we raise our children, we're trying our best, hopefully, to raise them to be obedient children. You know, we, we don't want them being crazy. And so the correction comes from us from time to time. Uh, but Abraham was instructed by God. He said, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should, after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and went out not knowing where he went. It said, by faith he sojourned in the land of promise as, a strange, as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacle with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise, where he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. When Abraham got up to go, he didn't know where he was going. You know, sometimes to be obedient to God, sometimes he'll ask us to do stuff, and but he won't give us the whole story right just get up and go well he told abraham get up and go abraham got up and went you know it's like one guy said one time some people were sent and some people just got up and went you know they usually don't accomplish much but if you're sent and abraham was sent by god to the go to the land of promise but he didn't know where that was. He didn't know how far away it was. He just knew that he was going to sojourn and he was not going to be influenced by other things other than the voice of God. God's testimony concerning Abraham was this. 
And the Lord said in Genesis 7, 18, verses 17 through 19, And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, saying that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. In other words, God's testimony about Abraham is that this guy is one of those kind of guys I can ask him to do something, and he's going to do it. He, I don't have to question whether he's going to do it or not. He's already proved himself by getting up from the land of Earl the Chaldees and taking off and going to the land that I told him to go to. And he says, so I know that he's going to command his children. I know that he's going to teach them the right way. You know, the Bible said, raise up a child in the way they should go, and he's old, they'll not depart from it. I I, don't, I wonder about that sometimes because I think some parents have did their best to raise their children in the way that they should go and right now they're away from God. But we still keep praying that God will bring them back in, right? Also, Abraham's faith was influential. I mean, he had great influence. The faith that he had, it caused Sarah to believe that she's going to have a baby at 90 years old. I don't know about you, but I don't. I can't see my wife having a baby at 68, plus less 90. But she believed because Abraham said, "This is what God said." In fact, she even heard God in those three fellows that visited Abraham's tent on that one occasion. He, she heard God. Those fellows tell Abraham, "Your wife's going to have a baby," and the Scripture says she laughed. I don't wonder. If she wasn't laughing about the way she looked, she probably was laughing about the way he looked. Because he was a hunter. And it was funny because her laughter brought the name of the child. Isaac name meant laughter. She was going to enjoy pleasure and she was going to enjoy a child in her old age. It's amazing to me the influence that a person of faith can have on somebody else. Sometimes when you are struggling or you're going through a battle and you come in contact with somebody that's got a lot of faith, it, doesn't it do something for you? It's like, you know, I, I've told this story before about a lady I met in Baton Rouge. She was an uh, old Church of God woman, wore a hair bun, her, her dress was down to her ankles. But when I talked to her, it was like, wow, this, this woman knows God. I mean, you, you could just... See, you ever met anybody like that? You can just feel God when you were around them. And uh, I remember we came back from that trip, and I mean, it seemed like all hell broke loose as far as our church was concerned. And I had finally said, you know what? I, I'm just, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm just going to quit uh, the church. I'm going to resign. I'm going to leave. And it was on a Sunday night. I had my notes all prepared of what I was going to say and all that. This has been years ago now, but... I had it all prepared about what I was going to say and how I was going to leave. And just before we left the house, this was when we lived on Fellwap Street in Taylor, the phone rang. And so I went and answered the phone, and I heard this lady's voice. I don't remember giving her my phone number, but I heard this lady's voice. She said, Brother Ron, I knew who it was. I only met her once. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, God told me to call you and tell you that everything's going to be all right. I mean, I start, I broke into tears. I'm like, I mean, I'm on my way to church. I'm resigning. After I spoke to her, I couldn't resign if I wanted to. I was confident that the voice that I heard on the other end of the phone was literally say what you want to, was literally the voice of God. Sometimes he will speak to us in ways that you wouldn't think he would. Remember old Balaam? He's grabbing along on his donkey and the donkey starts bang, braying back and he's like, oh man, I don't know. Finally after the third time, the donkey, he was hitting the donkey trying to get him to go on about the third time the donkey turned around and talked to him. <laughs> it's like, that was shocking. 
So he got down off the donkey and he walked around and there was this big old haystack thing sticking up. It looked like a man. He said, you old stupid donkey. He said, you're afraid of what you need to be full of. That corn stalk. Well, you know what? Sometimes that's the way we are. Sometimes we are afraid to get too close and yet, that's what we need more than anything else is to get as close as we possibly can to the Lord Jesus. Amen. So when I talk about Abraham having influence over Sarah, he not only had influence over Sarah, he had influence over his entire family. Why? Because he remained faithful, because he remained obedient, because he kept doing what God wanted him to do. Amen. We, we have said this from time to time, but... We have to try our best to keep our voice in the lives of people. If you continually go in the wrong direction and do wrong, God will forgive you. But you're going to lose your voice with some people. Sure. Some folks are going to look at it and say, man, that guy, he, he ain't real. I, I seen what he did. He was awful. Because see, people, whether they want to admit it or not, most of the times are very unforgiving. You can't tell everybody your most intimate thoughts. You can't tell everybody the things that you, that sometimes become an influence over you that sometimes cause you to feel discouraged or weak or tired. When you're going to confess whatever you may be struggling with, sometimes you have to try to find somebody that has faith, somebody that trusts God, somebody that knows the way to get a hold of God in prayer. I... Look at that Sandy back there, but every time somebody's got a problem anymore, every time they got sickness, they don't call me, they call her. And then she sends me a text. So and so needs prayer. Just wanted to let you know so we can pray together. You have influence. It's a blessing to have influence. How do you get influence? You live your life the right way. You walk the way God wants you to walk. You know, I'm, I'm looking at my son Caleb. I'm thinking, if there's any going to be in, any influence on my other sons, it's going to have to probably come from him. Hopefully, they'll see something in me, but it's going to, a lot of it's going to have to come from him. And maybe Barb, and maybe one of you meeting them somewhere down life's pathway, letting them know that, hey, I'm, I remember when I first got saved, I had guys like Art Long and all the other people that I knew from when I was a young kid. They would come up to me after I got saved and say, we've been praying for you. I appreciate that because had they not prayed, I might not be saved. But I am because of what Christ did on Calvary's cross. Abraham was not only influential, he was also a visionary. He looked into the future. He did not live his life in carnality. Listen, it's one thing to be a Christian, but it's another thing to be spiritual. Can I say that one more time? It's one thing to be a Christian, but it's nothing to be spiritual. I know some people that profess Christianity that they're so carnal, it just, it's scary. You wonder sometimes, are they really saved? How can they talk like that? Why did they say that? Who, why are they so mad? What are they angry at? It's, you look at it and you go, wait a minute, there's something about Jesus living within us ought to cause us to crucify our carnality and be all we can be for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But he looked into the future and said, therefore spring there even one of him as good as dead, so many as the stars in the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. He had this influence that really would cause a bunch of people come to know God. Jesus Christ would come through that lineage. A lot of the prophets would come through the seed of Abraham. Listen, it says Abraham would not be controlled by the world. Are you controlled by the world? It said he would not be controlled by the world. And in fact, I'm looking in Genesis chapter 14, verse 20, and Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lived lifted up my hand unto the Lord, the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet 
that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou should say, I have made Abraham rich. Abraham rejected the gifts of the king of Sodom and chose to let God be his source and security. You say, well, how come Sodom was wanting to bless him? The king of Sodom was wanting to bless him. Well, old Lot was living in the city and there was a bunch of kings, four and five, they came and they took all the stuff from Sodom and Abraham heard about it. He said, my righteous son, you know, Lot, he called him his righteous son, even though Lot had pitched his tent towards Sodom and now he's living in Sodom and he's at the gate of Sodom. And when it's time to leave, he's still hanging on, trying to stay there in Sodom and said the angels had to grab him by the hand and drag him out of the city with his wife and the two daughters. And you know the story, his wife turned back, turned to a pillar of salt. So she didn't get out of there, but he was reluctant even to leave after they told him that God was going to rain fire and brimstone on the city and destroy it. Well, when those four of the five kings had come and taken everything, the king of Sodom was so happy to get everything back that he said, I, I, want, to, I want to bless you. Abraham said, I will none of your stuff. I will not be controlled or influenced by the world. You know, there, there have been people that God has laid his hand on. Guys like Elvis Presley, uh, Mickey Gilly. I just read recently a story of even Jerry Lee Lewis at one time was raised in a home where there was Christianity. Um, and yet the world started drawing at them. And I remember reading the story about Jimmy Swaggart and it said that his uncle Elmo was a very influential man. Jimmy was just starting out being a, an evangelist and Uncle Elmo came and uh, said, son, uh, Sam something, he was a record producer. He said, he's, I, he's, he's made Elvis Presley popular and, your cousin Jerry Lee, and he goes, and now he wants to do a gospel side. He goes, and he wants to use you. And Jimmy was like kind of threadbare, his shoes had a hold of him. He was getting he would get his offerings after he'd preach, and maybe it'd be three or four dollars. And he would sometimes buy the gas for the car and get him from one place to the other. And he walked into the church and he went in there and he was asking God, Can I go? Can I use this? Can I go? God said, No. You can't go. He said, How can I? But he said in the book, it said he remained faithful to God. And those of you that know anything about him, he's probably sold billions of albums and preached to 185 different countries. You say, but brother, he made a mistake. Well, who has it? Yeah, you show me somebody that hasn't made a mistake, and I'll show you a liar. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. And sometimes there will be folks that will come into your life that will try to draw you away from God. And you have to be careful that you don't let the world influence you and draw you into that trap. Sometimes people get blessed and they'll get a better job and they've got, you know, all of a sudden they're making a whole lot of money and the next thing you know, they don't need God anymore. But they forget that the blessings that they have come from God. Even the, the people that are, you know, great stars as far as in the sports world and stuff like that, they, they don't ever look up and thank God for the giftings that God had gave them. But those perfect things come from God. If a guy, it was a guy yesterday, uh, can't think of his name right now, but he had a home run into center field, and he coming into the dugout, man, everybody's cheering for him and all that stuff. I'm thinking, I wonder if he looked up and said, God, thank you. Because everything's got to work just right for that to happen. All good and perfect things come from God. And so, no matter if it's a home run or a song that causes it to run to the top of the charts, or if it's a movie that gets you to a certain place in your life, you have to understand something. All good and perfect gifts come from God. So you better be careful that you don't lose sight after God blesses you. Because you can. Abraham fully trusted God. 
Y'all okay? By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son. Now, God had not told me, Abraham, your son is going to be your heir, and there's going to be thousands, like the stars or the sand of the sea. There's going to be so many people. And then God comes and says, I want you to take your son, your only son, Isaac, and offer him up as a sacrifice. <laughs> it's like all of a sudden, it said, He received the promise, offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall all thy seed be called, accounting that God was able. This is way the faith of Abraham he said, God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. He, uh, he said, oh, God, you want me to do that? I'll do it. But uh, my faith is saying you're going to fix it. No matter what happens, you're going to fix it. Abraham knew how to be a servant. And those three fellows come to his tent that day to tell him what they were going to do in Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, Shall I behold? And said, The Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat at the tent door of the heat of the day, and he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him, and when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door, and bowed, toward, bowed himself toward the ground, and said, My Lord, I, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee for thy servant, from thy servant, let a little water, I pray thee, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree, and I will fetch a morsel of bread, and comfort ye your hearts after ye shall pass on for therefore are ye come to your servant and they said so do as thou hast said and Abraham hastened to the tent into Sarah and said make ready three measures of fine meal knead it and make cakes upon the hearth and Abraham ran into the herd and fetched a calf and, and, and gave it unto the young man and, and he dressed it and he took butter and milk and calf in which he dressed and set before them and he stood by them under the tree and they did if you're going to be a spiritual person, you're going to have to learn how to be a servant. I'll say that one more time. Servants, if you're going to be one, you got to learn. If you're going to be spiritual, you got to learn how to get on. Jesus gave us the perfect example of what a servant is, didn't he? When he got down and washed his disciples' feet. You willing to wash feet? Not literally, but doing what God asks us to do. I'm going to close with this. True saints are surrendered saints. You can have God or you can have the world, but you can't have both. The world will always draw you away from God, and God will always draw you away from the world. Amen? A.W. Tozer said this, and I, I, I typed it out, and I wanted to read it to you. But he said, he says, occasionally, he doesn't say all the time, but he said, occasionally, one's heart is cheered by the discovery of some insatiable saint who was willing to sacrifice everything for the sheer joy of experiencing God in increasing intimacy. There's some folks, man, they, they don't care. They want God. They don't care about anything else. To such we offer this word of exhortation. He says, pray on, fight on, sing on. Do not underrate anything God may have done for you already. Thank God for everything up to this point, but don't stop here. Press on into the deep things of God. Insist upon tasting the profounder mysteries of redemption. Keep your feet on the ground, but let your heart soar as high as it will. Refuse, listen to me, refuse to be average or surrender to the chill of your spiritual environment. If you thus follow after, heaven will surely be opened to you and you will see visions want to know what God is doing, get close to him. He's not hiding. Usually we're the ones that are hiding. Jeremiah 9 verses 23 and 24 says, Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. But let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glory glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, speaking 
speaking of God, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Blessings. And I'm sure there's many, many more from the life of Abraham. But he was a person that was influential, obedient, he was a visionary, wasn't controlled by the world. He trusted fully in God, and he knew how to be a servant. God make me in one of those. Amen. Hallelujah. Filled with wonder. Filled with wonder. All struck wonder. At the mention of your name.
Jesus praise is worth it. Men praise him the least. The birds sing to him, the trees wave in the breeze. We honor him. All of his creation seems to just come alive in his presence. Prayerfully, God will make us in one of those. Worship him like he is and should be worshipped. I love you today. I thank you for being with us and service today. I pray we've been encouraged and a blessing and strength to you. I mean, you know, I just share with whatever, just like Brother Joe said last week, sometimes you just come up here and you say, Lord, this is what it is. And uh, just reading this week some of the things concerning Abraham's life just began to speak to me. I need to be more obedient. I want to have influence. I do and to have that, I must live my life holy and clean before my Lord and also before my fellow man. Because God knows us. You can't hide anything from me. I think sometimes people think, I'm going to go over here in this corner and God won't be able to see me. Yeah, really? David said, if I make my bed in hell, you're there. He said, if I ascend above the heights and the stars, he said, you're there. He said, so there's no place I can go and hide from you. And say, Lord Jesus, mold me and make me into what you want me to become. Amen. Father, we love you today. Thank you for those that have come and sat with us here today in the sanctuary. Thank you, Father, for those that have tuned us in by Facebook and will watch us maybe later even on YouTube. We want to be a blessing. That's our heart. We want to be an encouragement. We want to be a teacher and a preacher of your word that stands for truth in the midst of all kind of turmoil and struggle. Help us to reward to be a true preacher of the gospel. And we'll praise you and thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for watching us by Facebook. Have a great 4th of July. I don't know what you're doing. Maybe you're going to cook a hot dog again. Maybe you're just lay out I don't think they're going to lay out the sun today because it's going to be 91. So, go lay in your air conditioning if you have it. If you don't, get you a big fan. Amen? That's it. Lord willing, we'll see you next Sunday. I pray you'll come and be with us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm in hell.
Hallelujah. If you're still with us, that's a free song. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so 